the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself a prudent to guard a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth one more day being renewed the post resurrection days of our lord after the resurrection day which was yesterday the sunday and today being the first day of his appearance on this earth till another remaining 39 days which could eventually end up on may 5th or may 6th if we are considering it as a ritual we need to be very much thankful to our lord that he has literally witnessed 40 days a lot of significance considering number 40 days on this earth began with moses led into by the spirit for fasting by my lord for 40 days and now the appearance of my lord for another 40 days in the divine energy and the divine health which our lord has given for us through the mind of his word we are much thankful and we need to be ready to take positively under the influential ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit there can never be any other life as much as influenced which could be with Christ our Lord our Savior there could never be any other bond like the bond of Lord God the Holy Spirit which has to stay on this earth in us indwelling permanently in a permanent status quo but when we grew or squelch our life we are out of fellowship so again we need to use rebound 1 John 1 9 and get back into fellowship of our Lord which is of a great importance for us to note that the so-called morons who think that they are great in their sights and consider that my Lord was not been crucified and who think it could be in this manner, it could be in that manner, is all of a vain discussion. We know indeed Christ our Lord has been risen, and we enjoy in those moments, in the great words of our Lord which he has kept, even at the Roman practice of the letter which has been called in Latin, Crurifargum. Our Lord kept his word faithfully, for nearly 1500 years, for 15 centuries, they have practiced that the bone of the animal which they have to give as a sacrifice should not be broken. Then Lord was faithful, keeping enough that word towards by Christ with a heavy mallet when they came to break his legs because by evening 6 o'clock, it would be the next day and they had a great day feast of Passover. And they do not want to defile that land as per Deuteronomy or for Exodus which our Lord has given for them. In fulfilling that, in the minute part of that even our Lord was been faithful to see that the legs or the bones were not been broken of my Christ on the cross. How much more my Lord will be faithful enough to keep his word was a declaration when our Lord himself has submitted the spirit into his hand, saying, Father, into thy hands I dismiss my spirit. It simply quotes for us that God is faithful. With him there is no partiality. With him there is no unjust or unrighteousness or unfaithfulness. He is always faithful and true. Since the Sins that you commit by grieving and squelching, not getting it back in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Confession and the sins, homologia, to speak out the same things, what you have done. Not to any other member of the human race, not to the Roman Catholicism popery, which they have done and ruined the Christendom. 
But in the privacy of your soul, you tell to that directly to Lord God the Father that what you have done. And this is what you need to tell to Father. And since our Lord is faithful, He has already cleansed out, paid upon the cross. Your suffering will now turn into blessing. So that now you can know and don't lose your time. Philip the second of Spain said once, time and myself are very strong. And then he quotes an example, put a seed in the soil, and as the time goes on, it becomes a forest. But whereas when you put a sword in the soil, as the time goes on, it becomes rust. So are our lives today. The only sword of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord, we are putting into the earth. And by the time, Bible is not getting rust. But the man who has to use it, it is getting rust. By the time, as believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we need to be communicators of the truth. And it doesn't mean to say that you have to speak out. You are treating man or have to be when you live in the spirit and you have to walk in the spirit and yield unto the fruit of the spirit because we are not lawless as, as the Old Testament saints wherewith many people will say, if you are not under the law, then you are lawless. No. God forbid. We are not lawless, but we are under the new law. We are under the new law of the spirit to yield the fruit of the spirit. And that new law is grieve not, squelch not, lie not. And on the contrary, to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to be doing of this both, it requires to be controlled of the Spirit when you confess your sins through 1 John 1, 9. Which is of a very great essential lesson that you and I should learn. The reason why I'm saying this, many of the people constantly grieving and squelching if you look into their hearts and minds and souls we find always mental attitude sins which is contrary to the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit our Lord has said do not commit adultery in the Old Testament law but now he says whenever looks with whenever a man looks at a woman with that intention he has already committed adultery in his heart that one lesson should teach us many things then how much more we are grieving and squelching constantly. It is not necessarily that you have to perform in the word of deed or in word. Even in your thoughts, even in your imaginations, you are sinning. Therefore, dear brethren, this post-resurrection days of 40 are very much valuable in Christ. This has happened almost all 2,000 years back. The way back of his crucifixion on the cross. But as we are being alive now, every year our Lord gives grace to understand this thing. Let us sanctify it. Let us honor it. Not as a ritual without meaning, but with reality to know how much importance it is. This 40 days, what our Lord was doing, that should be the question in our mind. He was teaching pertaining to the kingdom of God. And if our Lord was teaching pertaining to the kingdom of God, then what are we teaching today in our pulpits? Coming, telling about the second advent? Telling about the rapture? No. My Lord was very keen to tell the things that could take place in the kingdom of my God, which referring to the church age. The things that he has to do when he's ruling with millennium. The things that have been so great and important. And that things of God was been revealed for us through the mystery doctrine of the church age through Apostle Paul. The treating manner for each and every Gentile believer who believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now. For the Gentile nations, because now there is no Jew, no Greek. All are one in Christ. Our great Lord, our great God given mandates. And what it was related to him, to those people at the time of Jews, you might have thought. But they might have not understood this glorious body revolution which has been given through it. But today we have the completed canon of scripture and we have everything for us to not. We are not with an excuse before Lord to say, Lord, I do not know. The things pertaining to the kingdom of God, this 40 days, what he has preached. 
And after the ten days, the sudden insertion of the Pentecost day, the day of festival, for them the beginning of the church, which is our church age, the uniqueness of this very important church age. Dear brethren, what Lord has told, what they have heard, the death saints of the Old Testament who have been resuscitated, witnessing that he is the true Messiah. What a great lesson, dear brethren. Today it is of a great lesson that you and I should know. The glorious beauty of Jehovah. The glorious things pertaining to my Lord, his imaginations, his thoughts, his glorious valuable assets that he has given to us. His glorious plan and purposes, human mind cannot comprehend or apprehend until and unless it is by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to understand the simple truths. The simple truths are very great, very true, very unique, very perfect, very mature, because it is Lord who has designed it for us. And we cannot claim excuses or plead ignorances because of our arrogance because of our agnosis which is our without having the knowledge we cannot claim because you have been given the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and every believer individual believer is responsible for his evolution it is not that the power of will of your strength has been taken out to claim at the judgment seat of Christ to say, Lord, my evolution has been taken out and I couldn't. No, you cannot say that. The only issue in the angelic conflict, the only issue in the angelic conflict is the will, the free will, the evolution. That is the deciding factor in you. If you are a believer and not growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, and the only Evolutional issue for an unbeliever is that he has not believed in Christ, that is in him. People may think, what it happens if we don't believe in Christ, can we not enter into heaven? If anyone can really understand the significance of the crucifixion of my Lord on the cross, after going and proclaiming that victorious proclamation our Lord has told in John 14, no one can come through to Christ. No one can come to my Lord but through me. The very great dogmatical truths of our lives, which is of so much essential for us to note. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No prophet or no man, even he can have that thought, can have ever told those words. He's taking in earth all the religious books together. Only it is my Christ, our Savior, our Lord, because He has done it, He has been resurrected, He has paid for you and for me in full. Therefore, with dogmatical authority, He has claimed that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to my Father in heaven but through me. That's why we say for unbelievers, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may have your gimmicks, you may have your thoughts, you may have your strategies, you may have your tactics. We don't care. Because none has told, I am the way, the mediator between God and God-man. I am the truth. No one can claim that. Because he is the only truth. In him is truth and no darkness at all. In him is light and there is no darkness at all and no lies at all. And he said, I am the life, the one who gives us this eternal life. Perish in your own lives and thoughts, we don't mind. But our duty is to inform, we are informing you. You believe it, accept it, take it, reject it, we don't care. It is your evolution, because evolution is the issue at the judgment seat of Christ. You do not believe in Christ, therefore you are being judged. Already John, John 3.18 tells those who are believed have been delivered and those who are not believed have already been judged because they do not believe upon this uniquely born Son of God, the Monegine, the only one eligible to die as substitute spiritual death for us on the cross. That is what it has happened for us. 
on Good Wednesday, not on Good Friday. Morons think it is on Good Friday, and they want to follow the rituals of Good Friday. If it has to be something in the Sabbath of the Greek, it has to be plural, not singular. It is Sabbaths. The same week which was occurring, it was Sabbaths, the great high holy day Sabbath, which was on 14th of Nisan, whichever could be March or April, the first month of their year. And furthermore, taken into consideration on that great day, they have come to sacrifice my Lord, fulfilling the history. Morons, what they can understand. Morons want only that which is belonging to the Sunday school's kid stuff, which is putting in the cradle or feeding them with milk bottles changing their napkins or diapers. Morons want only that even though they are Christians after 20 years or 30 years, even as unbelievers as such. No difference between them and the unbelievers because unbeliever is being alienated from the plan of God. Believer, though he is a friend of God, is a traitor now because he doesn't know what is the plan of God. Therefore, they both walk in the same manner. Why you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to answer them effectively? Our Lord has said you need to be prepared. But where is the preparation today? It is of a great pain for us to proclaim these things again and again and tell to you all these things. By the time you need to be the communicators of the word, you are not. Once again requiring the moron stuff, the kid stuff. But doctrine is for those faithful men who have been grown up old in the faith of God. Though the deaths of those noble men, from where we can consider Abraham, or Moses, or Daniel, or Isaiah, or Job, or Zechariah, Jeremiah, the deaths could not extint them from the minds of our people. These were the noblemen because they were faithful to God. And those names have been written and kept for us to understand as an example what a reward Lord gives for us when we are faithful to Him to grow old enough in His faith, walking in His paths, leading in righteousness, reigning in truth. Dear brethren, Psalms 85, 10 and 11 tells to us, when the truth will spring out from the earth, righteousness will leap down to look upon the truth and bless them. And turn unless the truth leaps out or springs out from this earth, righteousness will not stoop down to look. And learning to come Christ, it is required for us to know, which is very great importance. Learning about Christ, knowing about Christ, is for mature men, not to the men who do not value time. That's why Philip II of Spain told, time and myself are powerful. Myself and we being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in accordance with the time, because Apostle Paul being telling for us, time is short. And as it is day, we have to do the work of the Lord. When it becomes night, we cannot. So is our life today. Though there are men who do not value the importance of Bible doctrine, who do not value the importance of the truth, who do not honor my Lord's word by at least writing once in their entire life the word of the truth, Far less if they can think they have read Bible 10 times, 20 times, 70 times, 77 times. But writing once will not compete with that reading. Writing is writing. It is written and kept. It stands written, set in the Greek, several times. In fact, even indeed in Luke 4, our Lord says, this is what it has been today fulfilled among the midst of your eyes, quoting from Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, 1 and 1 second verse of half. But what are we doing today, dear brethren? 
when our Lord has made us kings and priests, where is the written copy of Bible in our hands? Where can we tell it is written, I have written with my hands? Preferably upon your knees, I prefer to write. The strength which our Lord has given is not worthy to spend on the lives of this old sin nature, the tranquil patterns of the relations that we can get on this earth as we prolong in the pilgrimage trip. The energy which our Lord has given for us, the divine realm one, it is worthy to bow on our knees and right to have a life, a life of Christ, a life of our Lord. It is no longer I will live, but Christ who lives in me, said the Apostle Paul. And if Christ could be living in our lives, then first we need to crucify our flesh that very clearly in Galatians 2. Or Galatians 4, 20, 2, 20. Since you have not yet crucified with Christ, we don't live our lives. We are living the lives of the old sin nature. It was a great thing for the people to enjoy yesterday as a resurrection day. And for some it would be great enough to drink and to involve themselves in the lustful patterns of the old sin nature and consider themselves happy Easter in the pagan term rather than using happy resurrection day of our Christ our Lord. It's of a great pain and agony I'm telling these things. Why they have not been crucified themselves with their body to Christ. They have not at all been crucified. That's why they cannot enjoy the true resurrection of Christ. But Apostle Paul says, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me, the hope of glory. When he can quote it, he has a meaning, he has a definition, he has a purpose. In that divine energy, when we have been there, there can never be a life greater than to be influenced with the life of Christ on this earth. There can never be a bond greater than the bond of the, in the indwelling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. There can never be. Then if it is the life of Christ that we have to live, what it is? Is it not to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to yield the fruit and the character of Christ? And if our Lord has made us kings and priests, in Deuteronomy 17, 18, if it stands written, a king should write a copy of law to engrave, it would be more important to use the word engrave rather than to write. The one who are been there in the Old Testament time, they know what is engraving because they have been hard rockers, they have been working to build the land of Egypt in their architectural genius, which Moses was. To engrave, it takes time. Even in my country, India, they are famous. They are famous for each and every ideal for each and every image that they're going to create and they engrave it they know what it could be the meaning of engraving rather than writing it would have been used to engrave each and every word in the original hebrew or greek i think our believers would have been long dead to say that i not to be a christian because if i'm a christian i have to engrave and it is of so big in Hebrew and Greek to write, then they would have really left their entire life wasting it. Because it is easy to sit and read, it is tough to write. It will be more tough to write than to engrave. What we do after we go back to heaven, there at least we think if you have time, we shall engrave it. Each and every alphabet of my Lord, of my Christ, of my Savior which he has given for us graciously, and we hold it now in our hands. Holding it in our hands doesn't make difference. It has to be in our soul. It has to be in our spirit. It is not the blood that has to flow. It is his words. It is his hymn. It is the mind of Christ that has to flow. That is rendered to nothing but the word of the law. A writing we shall do on this earth. In the heaven when we go, before the rapture in our death, or that the rapture, whichever our Lord takes us back home, whichever he seems fit, let us engrave there, not wasting our time getting down upon our knees. 
And Lord knows better because when Apostle Paul told, those things are not permitted me to speak. But I am imagining that could be so. Because we need to honor back his word in that manner. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. It is your life. It is your chance. It is your day. If today is perished, it is gone. It is not going to come. If time is against yourself, then you are an utter failure. And if you are redeeming the time, purchasing the time, as Apostle Paul told, then time is with you. And under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, you can purchase that time. And the time that you have purchased in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is going to yield for you a greater fruit. A greater fruit of glory and honor to my Lord over here in this angelic conflict. And the historical impact of the legendary one that you leave behind to say, Though we die, our life speaks as an example to others. So in this post-resurrection day of 40 days, it will be a great benefit for us to be in the true fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to learn and to know the truth, and to understand the kingdom of God, which has to be for spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy, and then getting back into spiritual maturity. So think over this, as we shall continue in the next step. Father, grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us on these things, and bless us in these things, so that it could be a great beneficial work for thy glory in this grace that thou hast given in the divine energy and the divine help. To this section we pray, enlighten us more and more to the truth. And we could be more reality for the truth rather than just being a hypocritical Christians in the truth. But we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.